Midjourney's new zoom out and panning features have some awesome possibilities for video. I can change up the scene with every zoom, or I could pan to different locations. I can do that in any direction I'd like. And there's even more possibilities to throw some other AI tools on top. Maybe even add a character. This has been a lot of fun, although I wouldn't consider it a beginner technique. It's not just a couple clicks and you're good to go type of thing. There are multiple steps, but the only paid tool you need is Midjourney. Everything else can be done for free. The video editing side will look different depending on what platform you're using. I'm using Premiere Pro, but it can all be done in a free editor like DaVinci Resolve. It just involves zooms and some simple masking, nothing too fancy. But if you've never used a keyframe or a mask before, you will probably need to rewatch a few parts as you go through. To start off, we need a video that doesn't have any camera movement. Then take a still shot of the scene or a screenshot. It's easiest to use a shot that doesn't have a person in it. The next step is to send that in mid-journey. Just hit the plus button, upload a file, select it, then hit enter. Now we're going to use this as an image prompt so that mid-journey will generate us an image that looks similar. Right click on the photo and select copy link. Then use the imagine command, paste the link, then just add a simple description of what it is. You don't need to be too specific. Then we need to add the image weight parameter. This controls how much the output image resembles the input image. Set that to the highest level, which is two. So dash dash IW space two. Then choose your aspect ratio. I'm using this for YouTube, so dash dash AR 16.9. Now this will generate some images that look similar to our original. We're going to be replacing most of this image with our original shot, then using generative fill to blend it. But the closer it looks, the easier it will be to combine them. So this one looks great. And I'm going to walk through all the steps from start to finish for the zoom out technique first. I'll explain how to alter it for the panning effect after. The first two zoom out buttons will make it look similar to the existing scene. But to zoom out somewhere new, select custom zoom, then replace the main text from your prompt with the new scene. Let's try Mars. Then pick one that you like and upscale it. Then zoom out again. I want to see more Mars, so I'll just click zoom out 2x. Then you can repeat this as many times as you'd like. And anytime you want it to shift to a new scene, use custom zoom and change the prompt. The possibilities are endless. Now we need to save all these images. Right click, save image. Then I'll save them in order and add numbers to make sure they stay organized. If you have a lot of images, it's easier to download them from your profile on the Midjourney website. That way you can select them all and download them at once. Then I upscale each image to increase the quality. I have a paid subscription to Runway ML, so I use that, but there's plenty of free options out there. Next, I take the image that already has a 2x zoom on it and the original still shot and bring them into Photoshop beta. The free alternative would be to use a free image editor like PhotoP for the first step, then take the result into Adobe Firefly for the generative fill step. So I'll bring the original photo on top and then resize it to line up with the one underneath. You can do this by lowering the opacity or you could add a mask to half the image to help, um, but just line them up as close as you can. Then we'll use generative fill to blend all the areas where the image meet. Just select the area and generate with a blank prompt. Do this until it looks seamless, then export. Now we have all our images and it's on to the video side. Again, this will look different if you're using different software, but all the steps are the same. And my video is shot at 1080p, but the images are at 4K. So I'll start by creating a new sequence from the merged photo I just made. Right click, make new sequence from clip that creates the settings at 4K and brings it onto the timeline. Then bring the video on top and line it up, similar to how we lined it up in Photoshop, either by lowering the opacity or adding a mask to part of it. Just get as close as possible. This looks great. And next we add a mask. For mine, this will work with just a basic rectangle. Mask out the area that doesn't match, then add some feather to the edges to smooth it out. Then double check to make sure the whole clip looks good. I made the mistake once of doing all the rest of the steps before noticing that my arm left the mask at one point and disappeared later on. But now we need to merge these clips so they act as one for the zoom part. In Premiere, merging clips is called nesting. In DaVinci Resolve, they're called compound clips instead of nest. So you select both clips, right click, then select nest. Now you can see these act together when I zoom in and out. But before we set our zooms, we'll copy this clip, then merge it with the next image. So follow those same steps, just bring the image underneath, then shrink this clip down and line it all up. Most of the time they stay centered as they zoom out, so you just resize to 50% and it's good, but double check each of them just in case. Then add a mask, add some feather, and make it into another nest. And then repeat those steps for every image.
Now I have all my clips and they're all stacked on top of each other in order. So I'll create a new sequence and bring in all these new nested clips. And I'm creating this new sequence at 1080p so all these 4K clips are still in full resolution when they're zoomed in. And for this example, I'm just gonna do a steady zoom out. So I'll make each clip one second long and bring them all onto one track. And the next step is to add keyframes for the zoom. The first one will be different from the rest since where I'm talking isn't perfectly centered. So I'll position the frame where I want it to end first. So that's almost fully zoomed out. Um, 33 works great for the scale. And then click this button here to add a keyframe for the scale and same for the position. Then slide those keyframes to the end. Next, position the frame where we want it to start. This will automatically generate new keyframes. So take those and slide them to the beginning. Now look at the next clip add your keyframes for the zoom. These are the numbers I'm using for the scale, 70 at the beginning, then 33 at the end. They should work the same for you if you're following this process, but just adjust that if you need to. Then with that second clip, we'll copy the settings and paste them to all the rest of the clips that are zooming out. So now take a look at the whole thing, fix any other issues. This looks great. Then to reverse it, separate the clips the same way at the end, bring them down onto one track, then copy the settings from one of these clips and paste it over to just one of these, and then switch the keyframes. So move the beginning to the end and the end to the beginning. Then copy those settings and paste them to the other clips. Same steps for the very first clip to the last clip since those settings were different. Then this is good to go. We have a nice zoom out and then a zoom back in. And you can move things around if you want a faster or slower zoom. And for adding the character, I used HeyGen. So you can animate up to one minute of footage per month for free, but it is really easy to use. Um, a 4K image is too large to upload, so I take a crop of the face area from my upscaled photo. Then upload that to HeyGen, type the script, choose a voice. You could also upload your own voice or something you generated with 11 labs, but they've got a lot to choose from in here already. Then submit and it will give you your animated character in under a minute. Then I just bring that into Premiere, lay it on top and add a mask with some feathering on the edges. Maybe even add a character. If you want to add on another layer of effects, you could use Kyber's video to video. It's really easy to use as well. And there is a free seven day trial. It's $5 a month for the base plan. After that, you upload your video to the transform existing video section, then add a prompt in the next section. I like to just use their default styles, but you can come up with your own too. Then adjust the intensity of the animation, select your favorite preview frame and let it generate. This one takes a few minutes. And there's even more possibilities to throw some other AI tools on top. Maybe even add a character. And I have links to everything I talk about in the description if you want to try any of it out. And for the panning technique, we'll jump back into Mid Journey. Then I'll use this same photo and pan to the right, add any prompt you want. Then I'll upload a shot from my other scene, use it as an image prompt, then pan to the left using the same prompt. And I'm trying to pick images that look as similar to each other as possible, just so the merge is a little smoother. And these look solid, so I will export upscale, then bring them into Photoshop. Then use the same process as before to merge the scene with the original photos. Then I'll line them up next to each other and use generative fill over the seam. Perfect. Then bring that into Premiere and create a new sequence. It will be really wide. That's fine. This is the one we're merging the clips in. So overlay your original video and line it up, then mask out the sides. Do that with both videos and then nest it. Basically the same idea as before, but on both sides. We'll bring this into our 1080p sequence. And now we can use keyframes just like before to pan back and forth however we please. And that looks awesome. Then the process is the same for panning up and down. There are endless ways you can get creative with this. I hope to see some people experimenting. I don't use social media much, but I do check Twitter sometimes. So if you make anything, tag me there. I would love to check it out.